Hello again, and welcome to Spooky Season number two. That's right. I'm still Kirk. This is still Dumb Test Late. We're full on in spooky season. I've got my night voice going because it's late at night. And my throat is doing a weird thing, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, for this one, hopefully you enjoyed the first spooky season. Um, the Moonlit Bride, uh, set in Mexico City. I had fun doing that one. Um, but this one is going to be a quick one. It was an idea kicking around in my head. But every way I tried to like write it down or work it out, it just came out too cheesy. <laughs> But sometimes what you think is cheesy will resonate with someone. So I wanted to do do it, actually do this episode rather than just let it be one of those ideas that float around your head for a while and you forget about. And then you see it, somebody else take it from the creative ether and do their way with it. But um, yeah, so I'm putting this out there. So this is going to be a short one, but this is the second spooky season um, dumb test late episode. Okay. Now time for some interactive fun. So for this one, we're going back, 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 back uh, into the golden era of disco. Somewhere in the 70s, I don't exactly know when disco actually was. It was for me. But um, if I was alive, I think I'd be fond of disco. So this one is set in the disco era. Um, that's actually an idea I just kicked out right before recording. I wanted to do it in today's era, but maybe it'd be better if it was in disco era. Um, and so it's set, uh, or our character, our main character, uh, there's no heroes in this story, just as a spoiler. Our character instead of our hero is going to be named Stan because every disco guy in that era name was Stan. Stan had a mustache. Stan was nice and tall and very beautiful, um, but very vain. Um, like I said, he had a mustache, and it was the 70s, and he was a disco dancer, and he was an amazing disco dancer. So he was super vain. So he would always go to disco clubs, but kind of look down at other people who would hit on him. Oh, also, gay, kiss, gay disco clubs, because Stan's gay. Come on. I said he had a mustache, um, but he's super vain. Um, and he keeps people around just for the attention. Like he'll just keep someone who he doesn't, you know, really feel totally for around just to get their attention, um, to feed his own ego and his own, uh, I guess, sexual appetite or whatever. But he'll not belittle people, but he'll flirt with them a little knowing he'll get attention from them to boost his ego, but he won't really, you know, pursue a relationship with them. He'll just constantly go to disco clubs, dance his booty off um but never like make any commitment to anyone because he's young he's fun this is the 70s and like i said he has a mustache until one day he's chatting with friends and someone comes up to him and said hey and starts like talking to him and he's like hey but he doesn't really know this person but he has to boost his ego and this person says hey we had a lot of fun at this club last night called the hill and stan's like I've never been to a club called The Hill. But the other person talked to him. It's like, yeah, we we hung out. We danced. We had a drink. You you don't remember me? And Stan's like, I, I've never been to a club called The Hill. But he puts it out of Teddy, forgets about it. Mistaken identity. But then he's out at a restaurant or he's sitting at a bar, let's say. Just a rest, restaurant bar. Um, for some reason, a lot of times in the seventies, people would say they're going to a, a bar, but it was being a hotel. That was a big thing. So he's in a, a bar in a hotel, stands in a bar in a hotel. Somebody comes up to him and says, Hey, how about we continue that conversation we had at the disco club, the hill again? Stan's like, um, what club? I've never heard of this club called the hill. These, the other guy's like, yeah, we, we hung out. We had a drink. I bought you a drink. Stan's like, I've never caught, I've never been to the hill. I don't know you, but it piques his interest so much that Stan has to figure out where this club is and that he has a doppelganger. And of course, it's the 70s, so you can't get on the internet. You can't Google it. 
He has to drive around. He has to ask people. He has to use the yellow pages, call information. But he figures out where it is. He figures out there's this club he's never heard about. And he's annoyed because he's supposed to be the hottest, coolest disco dancer. Like I said, he has a mustache. So he goes into the hill and he looks, he's like intrigued, but also pissed because there's somebody pretending to look like him. That's what he's thinking in his head. But he's super vain, so no one can look like him. He has these big, huge bell bottoms, big sideburns. And of course, like I said, he has a mustache. It's the 70s. And so he's checking out this club, trying to look around and he's really not seeing anything. And he realizes like no one's paying attention to him. And like his Mr. Vane personality is going insane because nobody's really paying attention. No guys are flirting with him. Nobody's dancing with him. But then he realizes the population, the big crowd in the club is around someone else. It's the 70s. They're all disco dancing. And he looks and he sees a guy who looks exactly like him. Different clothes, but same mustache. Did I mention Stan has a mustache? And he sees someone, he looks exactly like him, but younger and more handsome. And it basically crumbles his Mr. Vane personality. Stan can't handle that. So Stan makes his way on the dance floor to his doppelganger. And his doppelganger, it's like, it's one of those scenes in the club where everybody disappears, but just those two people, and they're disco dancing together. Well, however people disco dance under the, the uh, crystal ball. It's magical. It's special. And it's like one of those special nights you see in the movies. And Stan falls in love with his doppelganger. They hit it off. He doesn't even ask him his name. He doesn't care. Stan's in love. Stan has a mustache and loves this guy's mustache. And they hang out. They hook up. Um, but then the next morning, the guy leaves and stands alone in his apartment. And he's bummed out about it. But he's like, I got to see this guy again. I'm in love with him. This is the first time Stan has been in love where he's chasing someone. He's infatuated. So he goes back to this club again the next night. He sees him there again. And it's the same guy. It's the same situation. Everyone parts in the club and they're the only two there on the dance floor killing it. Disco dancing, bell bottoms flying. It's insane. It's like Saturday Night Live or Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever, yeah. It's insane. It's amazing. And then they hook up again. And then Stan wakes up alone in his apartment again. He's like, I, this guy keeps doing this to me. And then Stan goes back to the club the next night looking for his love. He still doesn't know his name, but he's in love with him. He's in love with his mustache. But something is different this time. Because his love, Stan's love that he doesn't even know his name, his doppelganger that's younger and handsome, more handsome than him, isn't there. And Stan's like looking around the club. He's like, something's not right. What? He's not here. He didn't leave his number. Whatever. It happens. Stan goes back to his apartment alone. Kind of sad and depressed the first time in his life. He gets rejected by someone. The super vain Stan can't handle it. So he sleeps alone that night, but he wakes up. He wakes up and he feels weird. He doesn't know why. But of course, Stan, it's the 70s. He has a mirror on his ceiling. So when he wakes up and he looks at the reflection of himself, he can't believe it. It's him. But he's much, much, much older. And he can barely move. He can barely get out of the bed or walk. Stan looks at another mirror in his apartment. It's him. But he's much, much older. The mustache is barely even there. The sideburns are barely even there. He's hunched over. Stan can't believe it. Stan, some, some way how, finds a cane in his apartment. He never had his cane in his apartment before, but suddenly it's here now. He's a hunched over old man. And he gets in a taxi and slowly makes his way to this club. Because it's the last thing he remembers. And he looks for his love again that he never knew his name. And his love is there this time. But of course, Stan is this old man and nobody recognizes him. None of his friends, none of the guys he's hooked up with before, none of the acquaintances, none of the bartenders he's made friends with. They just look at him kind of as a sad old man walking around the club. But his love that he fell for two nights before, 
instantly recognizes him, makes his way over to Stan, puts his hand on his bent over, hunched over shoulder, old man shoulder, I should say. And his love says to Stan, thank you, Stan. Stan looks up at him and says, what happened? This is what happened. Stan fell in love with a changeling. This is a this is an erotic changeling story. This is the whole thing. The club that um, he went to called the Hill. In old changeling culture, um, if you fell into the fairy world, which was this club, it would be like on a it would be on a hill or in a well. I went with a hill. So Stan falls into this fairy world. That's this club. He doesn't know it. He didn't fall in love with a new person that looked like him. He fell in love with a fairy that was impersonating Stan to steal his youth. So now Stan is trapped in this old man body while the changeling takes over Stan's life. And all the vain, you know, uh, uh, confidence and all the, the Mr. Ego that Stan had is now gone. Like his beauty is gone. His youth is gone. And it's gone to this other person. And everyone that Stan strung along and tried to use over the years, they don't recognize him. They just see an old man as he tries to ask them for help because you need someone to, in changeling folklore, you need someone to, there's I, there's either a fire or something like that. It's kind of crazy when you think of in changeling folklore dealt with kids. But no one will help Stan because in reality, no one liked Stan. Stan only liked Stan. And the changeling that took over his body, the fairy that took him over, knew that and exploited him for that. Now the changeling lives forever as this disco dancing Stan, this beautiful man. And Stan is an old man forever. And he's stuck in this old man body. Because one day he woke up and he looked in his ceiling by the mirror and said, I woke up like this. So that's my that's my uh, changeling story is a quick one. Um Every way I thought about it, it was cheesy, like the whole story, or it was similar to like um, the show, What We Do in the Shadows with the vampires. I think at one point the vampire creates um, somebody who's in love with and who looks exactly like him or something like that. It, it, it was a, sto- a short, spooky story idea, um, a changeling one with Stan, the disco duck. But yeah. I'll be back soon with the next one. I just wanted to put this. I didn't want nothing to go. I need to boost out. I need to put out these spooky stories, but I ended there. My short spooky story. Um, I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think. Find me somewhere. Find me on the internet. Not in real life. Find me on the internet. So let me know what you think. Unless it's me, but I still love you for listening. Um, I mean, I'm still Kirk. This is still dumb test late. Um, Enjoy spooky season. I hope you're doing something good. Not eating too much candy. Don't eat too much candy. It's too early. Eat candy after spooky season. Um, That's when it's on sale. But um, thanks for listening. I will catch you soon on the next one. Bye-bye.